Can a simple diarrhea from some random food you ate cause muscle paralysis of your body to a point where you can't even walk? And even worse, can it paralyze your lung muscles and you might end up on a ventilator? Uh oh, what am I on about this time? Let me explain. What I'm talking about is the most common reason people get diarrhea in the United States. The most common cause of bacterial diarrhea in the United States is actually because of an infection known as Campylobacter jejuni. And Campylobacter jejuni can cause a watery diarrhea but can also cause a bloody diarrhea. Now Campylobacter jejuni, once you get that infection because you ate some food from your favorite restaurant and now you're having watery or bloody diarrhea, your body is going to produce antibodies against the Campylobacter jejuni. But what happens is these antibodies, apart from just destroying your bacteria, due to molecular mimicry and similarity of the bacterial components to your myelin that's present around your nerves, now these antibodies are going to go destroy this myelin and what you're going to end up with is something we know as GBS or Gillian Barre syndrome. Now when it comes to GBS, it is going to have a classic pattern of ascending paralysis and your classic feature is going to be hyporeflexia or areflexia. Well, why? Because if you're going to destroy your nerves peripherally, what we call this is a lower motor neuron lesion. If you have a lower motor neuron lesion, your reflexes should be going down. So hyporeflexia and areflexia is what you're going to see. So if you're suspecting somebody with GBS, what's your next step? You will get a lumbar puncture. When you get a lumbar puncture in the CSF, you're going to see something very unique. You'll see an elevated protein, but not an elevated WBC. We call this albinocytologic dissociation. Now, why does this happen? You always have to ask why, if not, what's the point of life? Now, when you think about it, let me put it this way. Your meninges are the major cover that's covering your brain and that is known as your blood brain barrier. If you're not affecting your meninges, don't expect true disruption of your blood brain barrier and therefore WBCs will not go up. If you look at meningitis, there's true disruption of your blood brain barrier because it is meninges, meningitis. So WBC will go up and protein will also go up, but WBC will go up there. When it comes to GBS, you're destroying nerves. You're not doing anything to your meninges. So as a result, what you're doing is you're damaging a blood nerve barrier as opposed to a blood brain barrier because of meninges. And as a result of this, you will only have a local inflammation resulting in elevated protein level in your CSF, but never would your WBCs actually go up. It can go up a little bit, but never very high. That's the reason for elevated protein without concurrent elevation of WBC. Now, once you know how to diagnose your GBS, how are you going to treat?